Pod Studios. This is Talkin' Rock. Talkin' Rock. Your backstage pass to some of your favorite rock artists. Here's your host, Meltdown. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Talkin' Rock with uh, Ollie from the band Bring Me the Horizon. I'm not sure if I've ever uh, interviewed Ali before, so it was kind of cool to uh, talk with him. Uh, By the way, I was talking to him while he was in Buffalo, not too far from uh, where I grew up, so that was kind of cool. We talk about what it's like being a rock star. We talk about their new record coming out, uh, all the different elements of it, and uh, much, much more as far as Bring Me the Horizon is concerned. Now, here's a guy that's got over 5 million followers on Instagram. I mean, that's just insane to me, right? Anyways, he was super cool. You can watch this uh, interview as well at WRIF.com slash meltdown or just go to the Riff TV section at WRIF.com and I'll put that all in the uh, bio and the whole thing. So in the meantime, I was uh, joined, like I said, with uh, Ali as he was uh, outside of Buffalo. He told me where he spent the previous night. Uh, checked out Niagara Falls. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. You've probably been there before, though, right? Many uh, years ago. Yeah. I'm from the other side, but um, I've never seen it at night, which is cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool uh, when they light it up like that. So so you guys have a lot of things happening. Of course, the uh, tour, you just came through town with uh, Fall Out Boy. How's things going on the road? Yeah, it's been good, man. It's been long, but um, it's been a really cool tour. It's been our first support tour in like a minute. Um, so it's been just nice to have um, a shorter set and much less pressure. But the fans have been really receptive and um, really cool to us and stuff. Um, definitely been a few people like, what the hell is this band? But um, yeah, it's been sick. So I guess uh, when you go up there on stage every night, your goal is to win over some of those what the hell fans, right? Exactly, yeah. Which has been nice because I think we've been doing a good job of that. I think our set starts off quite heavy and you can just see some people like, what is this mayhem? And then by the end, I think we um, we always get, we always tell everyone to sit down at the end and, and kind of like jump up for the last moment and you can always get a pretty good gauge of like if they listen to you and actually do it then we take that as a win and most people uh, well everyone does so yeah it's been good so you guys probably could have done your own a headlining tour um why did you choose to 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 do this, this tour like this i mean you just said obviously like you know obviously there there's a there's a load taken off your shoulders but is is that pretty much the reason why or just a good bill um i mean <laughs> we got offered better money than we would get for our headline show. So that would be definitely one reason. Um, but also like we've been doing, we've been going like nonstop and we're kind of on the verge of burning out. Um, Cause we're trying to do like records and tour at the same time and stuff like that. And um, I think we just felt like just doing something easy for the summer would, would be nice. Cause we weren't even planning on touring. Um, but we, we also don't know how to stop. Um, so this was a good way for us to continue writing with like a less hectic schedule because we don't have to sound check and we, you know, we have a shorter set and stuff. So we've been doing a lot of writing on the road. Um, but also like, you know, um, we've still got fans to win over, people to win over, people to show who we are and stuff. We're not like the biggest band in America and stuff. So and especially with the kind of the, the, the sound of our new record, we felt like it was like a good fit. And um we just want to continue to be that band that like appeal to just rock fans of all types, you know? So you just mentioned the uh, sound of the new record. Um, is it, it, Explain the sound of this new record. Is it the most eclectic record you've done? Um, it's, it's part of um, four EPs that we're working on uh, called like the post human series. And they've all got their own, particular sound and this record's definitely leaning more into like I guess the kind of bands where I got obsessed with rock music was like when I got into my like hardcore post hardcore emo phase like we grew like kind of you know my first ever show was Linkin Park but then I started going like straight edge hardcore shows and punk gigs and stuff like that and local you know shows at pubs and stuff like that and that's when i got like introduced to like hardcore music and then bands like glass jaw and american nightmare and um all that stuff and that this is this record is definitely paying homage to that stuff and even bands like fallout boy which you know and um my chem and like all the emo uh stuff taking back sunday and stuff so like 
it's definitely got that feel, but then we're trying to like push it in a, a direction that makes it feel like contemporary and modern and, and, and like something new. So you get kind of the nostalgia of those years, but then it feels fresh, you know? Yeah, no, it sounds killer. I mean, what I've heard so far from it, there's like the songs are like kind of there. No, no two song even sounds even closely similar. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, we, we're definitely trying to hone in on a vibe, but then I guess like the spectrum of emo and hardcore and, you know, post hardcore and stuff like that is, it's quite wide. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it does give us a fair bit of room to play within. Yeah, and some of the stuff is uh, really heavy. Obviously, you know, AM, Amen is super heavy. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're definitely tapping into, like, bands like Dillinger Escape Plan and Glassjaw. And, um, like, it's... There is not that much difference between, like, a metalcore song and a when you get into that kind of, like, that world of, like, post-hardcore and stuff. But it's more about the the freeness and the energy, the kind of frantic and like unhinged energy of it which was really fun to tap back into because i always feel like even when we're heavy we're all like a, we've become quite a polished band and it was very fun to like kind of just throw all that out and just be like rough and ready again yeah so i was going to ask so is, is this record uh in some ways a little more raw raw in the sense that it's going to be a lot more like unhinged and more expressive and less like like I say, polished, it's going to be more just like do exactly what you want and like be as creative as you can and, and kind of almost like keep a childlike quality of like, like, like when we first started and we didn't know how, you know, how to write a song really, or even play our instruments or whatever, we just kind of was like, okay, we're going to do this riff into this breakdown into this bit. And that like, there was no kind of like, yeah, but where's the, where's the structure? Do you know what I mean? And as I think as from like, well, even Suicide Season, and as we progressed, I kind of, like, learned how to write a song and really tapped into that, and, like, and I think I've learned the rules now, and I think it's time to go back and break them, and I think once you know the rules of writing a song, that's brilliant, but then it it, it makes you be able to break those rules even better than, um, than before because you know what you should do, and then you know how to kind of... I guess transmute it or, or or take it to a different level, and I think this record's going to be all about that. It's like you know the rules, so don't follow them. You know, yeah. And this record, uh, I mean, maybe this is an obvious statement. Will it challenge the fans? Um. Yeah, I guess we always challenge the fans to some extent, and we never want to write a record that doesn't like, cause that to me, if we don't, it makes me, it just make it feel not fresh and old. And we want to, we want to make music that you wouldn't expect to like and then do. And I mean, sometimes when we write music, it's like, Oh, I wouldn't expect even us to be able to write some music like this and we like it, but we've done it. Um, so I think it will. I, but at the same time, I feel like if you're a Bring Rising fan, you kind of so prep for that now that it's, it's not, as it was maybe five years ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're just trying to push ourselves and challenge ourselves more than anything. Um, whether that challenges the listener, I don't know. Um, but to some extent, I'm sure. Now this new, uh, the, the post-human uh, next gen uh, part of the post-human series drops on September 15th. You just mentioned a couple of minutes ago that uh, when you're out there on the, on the road, you, you're still writing stuff, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Every day, pretty much. Yeah. Now, is this just stuff that you're going to put in the bank for later on, or is, do you have do you already have some some crazy mad scientist plans going on? Um, this is for the next record, really. Um, and yeah, we just it's a way for us to stay busy on tour and do something creative, and um, I guess um, healthy with our time. Um, it can get a little much. Um, when you're trying, when you're trying to write and then play a show and stuff like that, but um, I'll also find like when you're that close to what you do, you know, you're going out and you're playing a show and you're like seeing how people react to your songs and kind of constant reminder of why you do what you do. It's 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 kind of cool to do at the same time, although it doesn't like I'm looking forward to getting off this tour and actually be able to sit down and just having a day where I concentrate on just writing. 
Mm-hmm. When you guys go into the studio, like you said, you're writing and stuff right now. Are these songs uh, that that you're recording? Do you, I mean, do you go into the studio with like kind of an open slate, or do you guys really know how these songs are structured and what they're going to sound like? Um, I mean, it's an ongoing process, but we'll. I mean, we don't even really go to studios anymore. We'll re- like we will record stuff on tour, and that'll be the what you hear. You know what I mean? Um, we can put all the guitars through like um, vocal. Vocal booths are overrated. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like we're not. I like I say about tapping into that kind of like raw and unhinged energy. It's like, it's like getting over all that muso bollocks of like certain mics and certain rooms and stuff. It's like oh, no one gives a shit anymore. It all sounds. It all if it if it's got the energy and it's got the emotion, that's all that kind of matters. Yeah. You mentioned also that, uh, and you've talked about this before in the past about how uh, Lincoln Park was really like kind of your gateway to uh, to, to music. I'm I'm assuming uh, you got any experiences with Chester? Uh, I met Chester before. Um, we did an interview together for a Krang magazine back in I want to say 2014, maybe, mm. um, which was just like insane for me um and he was a really nice dude and um he was really like he was really like um inquisitive about like what we do and you know we were i think we we're on walk tour at the time and he were like I remember saying like how the hell do you keep your voice and stuff like i lose mine all the time and stuff and yeah we we're just talking about stuff and obviously it was just like a mad dream come true moment for me and then you got to play at his um a celebration of life. Uh, what was it like to uh to to play there? Um I guess best way to describe it would be bittersweet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um obviously like just an unreal experience for me, but just under the worst possible circumstances. Um so yeah, it's I don't know. I think it's 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 hard to um process things like that do you know what i mean it almost like it's like i never like really say much when like when famous people die that you don't really know but meant a lot to you because i'm always like the part of me is like what like what right do i have to like talk about this but i didn't know them it's just because their musical what they did did so much for me it's like it's like it's weird i, I get this kind of like imposter syndrome of like um like i feel like a piece of me has died but also like i didn't really know this person um so it's just like it's a really hard thing to process i definitely felt like a part of like my childhood died when he died of my like innocence i don't know um but you don't it's hard to i didn't cry because i didn't know him as a person but like it just you just left totally good and like still like a sh- kind of like disbelief i guess um the same when played the gig it was just like this is it's almost like what you, you're you not doing what you're actually doing like you're not actually thinking about it like what it really is like i'm here stood up it's basically is his funeral i'm <laughs> playing his funeral you don't think about it like like you just do it and yeah i don't know grief's weird yeah, I uh, I got to meet Chester before their first record even came out. They were doing like this uh, tour of radio stations across the country, and um, he was a super nice guy. And it's like when I heard that news, that that was a real shocker. That came out of left field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. But uh, anyways, you just talked about uh, he was talking to you about y- your vocal stuff. Obviously, you're playing tonight. I just had an interview canceled last week because it was scheduled for a show day. What? How do you do? You take vocal rest, or how do you take care of yourself on the road? Yeah, um, I actually struggled with it a lot, but found ways to get around it in terms of like output and the way you do what you do. And I think I used to always get on stage and, and scream and sing the same way I do in the studio, which is like 110%. Um, and like you've, my singing teacher has drilled it into me that it's like, it's not a race, it's a marathon that you're doing you've got like an hour and a half it's not a sprint you know so it's 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 about learning when to give that 100 percent and when to take it easier and when and how to manipulate your voice to do the same thing with less energy and stuff um 
So over the years, I've just got better and better at doing that. And I actually now, it's starting to become a not really much of a, like I haven't lost my voice or even really, maybe it got tired a little bit, but like not to a point where like I used to, like every tour it'd be like, by fourth day, I'd be like, fuck, I've lost my voice, you know? Yeah. So getting better at it. But it, yeah, it's, you know, you, you have to respect it as an instrument. You know what I mean? You have to, it's an instrument, a very tiny instrument as well that that you use every day for, you know, all the time. And so, yeah, sometimes you just got to learn when to shut up or when you can't go out and have a late one with your friends and drink or, you know what I mean? You just got to like respect it and, 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 um, realize it's like a muscle as well. I think one thing as well is like, if you know, if you, if you stop going to the gym, you lose your muscle. And if you stop singing, you, you lose your ability to sing well. Do you know what I mean? So it's the same as well. It's like when I get off tour, I've got to make sure that I don't just go, I'm not going to sing for two months now, you know, just all little things like that. Yeah, you always keep it going. Hey, just a couple more things here and we'll let you loose. I appreciate the time. Like I said, the new record drops on September 15th. So is this rock star thing, everything it's been cracked up to be when you were a kid? Did you think this was going to be as good or as bad? Or is there bad days, good days? Tell me about being a rock star and living the public life like you do. Mm. Um, it's it's a journey and you just have to figure out your own way of making it what you want it to be. It can be exactly what you want it to be, but it's um, it's it's easy for it to become not what you want you, by chasing things that you think you want, if that makes sense. Like, um, I think it's all about remembering why you do what you do. And like when I started the band and wanted to make music, I just wanted to make music for people to like mosh to and dance to and have a good time. And I had no ambition outside of that. I never thought about money. I never thought about houses or cars or whatever. I never thought about, being the biggest band in the world and never thought, you know what I mean? I just, just wanted to make music and I just want to be creative. And, and I think that's as long as you keep that, it's, it's that. And remember, that's what it's all about. Then you still love it. As soon as you start going off and trying to chase something else, or it's when you start getting bitter and stuff. And I've definitely been there as well. So, and uh, yeah, it's, it is the best job in the world. Of course. It's, I love it. It's, um, it's what I wanted to always do. Um, I just have to remember that, you know, sometimes when I'm thinking, oh, maybe if we like water this song down, it could get on the radio and it could be a big smash. Or maybe if we took this money and did this, we, you know, I could buy buy this. It's like, nah, you've got to stay true to what you do all the time or else you won't be happy. And that's, that's, that's a sim- it's as simple as that. Yeah, and the new song, by the way, that's on the radio, Lost. Uh, man, the the videos that you've shot for these things are uh, insane. Is is that like is that like kind of your thing, or do do you, do you collaborate with people, or how how those come about? That one I directed with um, with with someone, um, and yeah, it's. I mean, I, again, that's that's like a, before I were in the band, I wanted to be a director. So again, it's another way of like of of me getting to do one of my dreams um and again just doing exactly what i want going this is what i want it to be i don't care like that video i remember our label was like but it's going to get censored no one's going to watch it because you'll have to sign in on youtube i'm like i don't care i want to do this yeah you're talking about you know being a director obviously you're in a band you got your clothing line all that other kind of what other kind of things are you what other kind of things would you like to do Oh, I mean, I want to do everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm always uh, thinking about something else, but I'm also trying to stop doing that because I need to just have some time to myself as well. <laughs> but um, I'm sure there'll be some other shit that comes up. But um, yeah, I'd love to do. Well, listen, enjoy the show tonight. When you're on that stage, if I'm not mistaken, when you look over to the right, you'll see the the big silos there. They're still there, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from when that place was just a, a farmer's field. But uh, enjoy the show. Should be a, a great night out there in Western New York. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.
Boys, man. Cheers, dude. Yeah, like I said, that show took place uh, last Friday as I record this uh, podcast today. So uh, good of him to uh, take some time with us here before that show. Like he said in there, you know, he, he could talk and does certain things with his voice. Uh, I was uh, did an interview with Chad from Mudvayne a couple weeks back, and that's who I was kind of referring to. Uh, he didn't want to talk to me on the day of of, you know, a show, a show dates, which is completely understandable, and especially with the way that he works his voice up on stage. So uh, we scheduled that around his time when he could kind of relax his voice and whatnot. In the meantime, I've got to thank uh, Ollie for checking in. Got to thank you guys for listening as well, as I've got more interviews uh, locked and loaded. Hey, by the way, last week had another big week. Um, we had uh, Chris and Maria from In This Moment on the podcast, uh, Eva uh, and Rob from Eve Under Fire on the podcast as well. So we've been uh, cranking things up here throughout the summer. I've got a couple in the works right now that I don't want to talk about because that's how I jinx myself. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for checking out Talking Rock. Thank you for listening to Talking Rock with Meltdown. You can help this podcast grow by giving it a five-star rating and writing a review on Apple and iTunes. Plus, feel free to subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, thanks for listening to Talking Rock.